Well, good day, everybody. Here we go again. I think this is number five, uh, number five of our uh, Ocean Globe uh, live interviews on some uh, entrance in the uh, uh, in the race coming up. So, um, right, right, yeah, number four. Jane says, "Okay, we got that wrong." <laughs> anyway, um, we're uh, currently in Adelaide and uh, in transit. I'll be actually over in Europe in another week, so we just moved. So. A pretty ordinary backdrop, but never mind. Anyway, without uh, going into it much further, I'm going to pull up uh, Alex Axel here. Uh, here we go again. I keep, I've got a block on on the name Axel versus Alex. G'day, Alex uh, Axel. How are you? Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's, it's funny, eh? Axel is a very famous name because I always, you know, remember it from Journey to the Center of the Earth, you know, with the duck and all that sort of stuff. But uh, anyway, so where are you, Axel, right now? So right now in, I'm in uh, Montreal, in uh, yeah. Quebec, Canada. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. And have you been sailing recently with the pandemic or anything? Is that affecting you? Uh, well, it is affecting me, but I had the chance to sail. So I've been sailing on uh, uh, Lake Huron, which is one of the great lakes in Canada. And then yeah. doing uh, transatlantic from the Caribbean to Canada. So I had the chance to, uh, to sail even with the pandemic but uh, okay. yeah all right so let's just before before we get into your background and how you started sailing and all those sorts of just tell me what your plans are in very short term for the ocean globe race like uh, your campaign what you're hoping to achieve and so on just to set the scene on on why you've entered the race or, okay. or what your plan is yeah so the plan the, the initial plan is uh it's all about sharing because uh, while sharing the passion of sailing and the emotions related with sailing. And so uh, I built a project which is called Arctic Stern uh, because of the bird uh, that does the round the world. And um, the whole mean is to, well, it was a dream from always uh, and it was just like to make it real and to share with people, with everyone, the passion of sailing and the love of sailing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, so you're in a, you're in adventure class. What what's yeah. your what's your hope for a boat? Like what what's the general plan to get a campaign together? Yeah. So the the, the boat we are aiming is a Swan Fifty One. Yeah. Uh, if everything goes fine and well. And we want to bring together a community which is uh, uh, sensitive with uh, environment and with sailing and to build together a campaign around those values. And so we're looking for a sponsorship and we're looking for uh, people who want to help with the project to make it happen because it's kind of a lot of, uh, <laughs> it's a big project. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's find out about you now. So, so what got you into sailing? And uh, were you born in in Canada? You know, like what's the story? Where did it begin? So, I was born in uh, Switzerland, uh, in Geneva, near the Lac Clément, okay. uh, in which I started sailing with my father and my my mother. And yeah, so that's that's little me with my mother. <laughs> so and that's, my that's, 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 me, me. that's little you. Uh, how how old were you then? You weren't very big. <laughs> that's, that's a Romane, a Romane 33. Yeah, okay. It's an aluminum boat. Yeah, it's nice looking know. boat. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's my father's boat. And we used to go sailing uh, all together uh, on uh, Lemon Lake. Yeah. And then I moved to, uh, yeah, that's another little me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I moved to uh, Barcelona in Spain. Yeah. Uh, where I lived for 16 years and doing some sailing there too yeah uh, and five years ago i came here in canada in montreal where i kind of discovered the racing part of sailing because yeah. before that it was always like going out and having fun just by the the, the, the sailing itself yeah. and here in canada i discovered the racing part of sailing and the first day i raced i was in love with that feeling, that adrenaline, that uh, teamwork you have to have. And so I started racing and entering in different 
uh, racing teams here in, uh, in Montreal. Can I, ask, can I ask how old you are now? How old are you now? You've grown uh, 27. up. 27. Yeah. Yeah, so I think you're one of our youngest entries. I think. Yeah, you're, you're our youngest entry in, in the Asian Globe at the moment. So 27, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So so all of a sudden I see this picture here where you've progressed in sailing and you're on a pretty powerful boat. What's the story there? So the story there is I was in uh, I was in Saint Bart, uh, sailing on a Volvo 60, and then I had to do the Antigua Sailing Week, but I didn't have any boat to crew on. Yeah. So I went to the uh, Lithuanian team, uh, Ambersail, and asked them if if they they needed any crew, and yeah. so I had my place on the boat on a yeah. Volvo 65 and it was absolutely amazing it was whew, so intense <laughs> yeah 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 it was adrenaline it was pure adrenaline and so this was before you'd heard about the ocean globe race or this was yeah. after this was before was, yeah yeah actually it was three 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 months before i heard about the ocean globe race yeah, so how did you hear about the race? What happened? Did you pick it up in a story, in a magazine, or what? Well, actually, I've been always uh, dreaming of doing a round-the-world race. Uh, so I checked about, like, uh, the Van der Globe or uh, the Volvo Ocean race. But having sailed on those boats, I found it was so intense that at the end of the race, I would, like, look up and realized I was sailing. Yeah. So I, I wanted to find a, a, a race in which you have time to sail, you have time to be with people, you have time to, to share the moment with your team. And so I saw the uh, Golden Globe race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's really a, a unique race. It's awesome. And yeah. I was thinking of like, building up a campaign for the uh, Golden Globe race. But the thing that uh, that stopped me, it was that I wanted to share this moment with people on the boat. Yeah. So to be in a crew. And so I was, if any day there's a, a race, like the retro race, on a, uh, with, with a crew and with soapovers, I have to do it. Yeah. And so on June uh, last year, I saw your race, the Ocean Globe race, and yeah. I was like, "Wow, Axel, that's your race!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're one of the early entrants. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Wow, yeah. that's yeah, that's a unique uh, chance." So yeah. yeah, okay. And so now. Um, Okay, so you, you've gone through sailing and everything, you're there. What do you do for a profession? Like, what, what's your normal work? My normal work? Uh, I'm an engineer and I work, for, well, I studied about uh, environmental and uh, renewable energies, yeah. which is my kind of my main subject. And I work for an electrical grid company here in Quebec. Uh, and so that's my normal behind the screen work. Okay. <laughs> what do you what do you what do you do if you're not working and you're not sailing? Have you got another interest or another passion? Uh, I I have a lot of passions, which is uh, like I, I need a lot of time to do all of them. But I <laughs> I love playing music. I love doing martial arts. What music, what music do you play? What what do you play? Uh, well, I did play piano for eight years, and now I'm yeah. starting to play the guitar. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Eight years. You must be pretty good. I hope you're going to take a piano on the voyage. You need to take oh, an electronic yeah. piano. I, I will rather take a, the, the guitar on the on the boat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we, we need a we need a uh, we need a, a song for the race. You know, we need an ocean oh, yeah. globe. You know, like like a, a song. So you have to get onto it. Oh yeah, that's um, awesome. yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Because I mean, is a that's it. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your um, playing while you're going around. That'll be fun. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, okay, so so now, um, what did your friends think when you told them you're going to do the Ocean Globe race? At first, they were like, "Wow, man, you're crazy!" Because, well, actually, it depends of 
the sailors one and the ones that didn't know what it would imply, those that wouldn't know what it would imply were like, well, that's cool, that's awesome. And the sailors one or the 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 ones that have been on on on, on the ocean were like, wow, what a tough thing you're planning to do. <laughs> yeah. And little by little, uh, confidence uh, grew up and now like everyone is like, yeah, uh, do you need something or backing up? So it's really beautiful to see that people believe in, in the project. Yeah, you, I see, you know, because you keep us updated. I know you've got some really good people that have actually joined your team now, you know, yeah. pulling it all together. So so how many people in your core group right now? In uh, the core group, we're uh, six. Yeah. Uh, we were eight in a moment, but because of the, the pandemic, some of them had to rethink. But I wouldn't be surprised if they come back uh, yeah. to work together because we were, we were like, it's it's a, a good group working good together. Yeah. But like right now we're six. And yeah. the interesting thing is that we're really mixed. So we have uh, bio, uh, biologists, we have doctors, we have uh, engineers. So it's uh, multi-disciplinary uh, people. And yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And, and what about local community support? Like, is it, is it cracking a bit of interest? You know, like you, you, oh, yeah. you're obviously out looking for sponsors. So yeah. how do you feel about that at the moment? Like, where are you positioned right now? Well, uh, we, we, we had a, a, a full calendar before the pandemic hit. And because of that, we had like to rethink our, well, as everyone. But uh, the ones that we approach are really interested on the project. And I am really confident about uh, the fact that we will be able to bring the project with the goal that we have, which is like uh, sharing the emotion and the passion of sailing yeah. nature and surroundings. Yeah, that's the big thing. There's lots of rich stories there. But anyway, Stephen Eddy, one of our great fans who happens to be a French guy, yeah. uh, asks, is asking the question, what's going to be the official language? Because I know, I know most Canadians do English and French. Mm -hmm. Normally, do you speak French? Like French is your like your mother tongue, or, or you know, how does that work? Uh, my mother tongue would be French and Spanish because of uh -huh. uh, that uh, explains uh, it. Because I I remember when the fit picture yeah. came in with your entry form, I said to Jane, I said, check this out. You look like a like a Spanish conquistador. You know, <laughs> not, not a French Canadian. So uh, uh, okay, so where's the Spanish coming? Is that your father? No, it's, that's my mother. My mother is uh, mother. from Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. because of my 16 years living there, I have like this Spanish blood. Well, that's cool because I can tell you what, we I already know because we see the interest coming in from different aspects of the race. There's going to be quite a solid following from the Spanish as well. Oh, yeah. You know, the Spaniards are, as you know, you know, strong sailors. Um, so, uh, okay. So, so uh, it will probably be French and Spanish rather than English. Uh, well, for now, because of the, the, the crew is uh, all French speaking, we will speak in French. But as we are, we have the, uh, the chance of speaking many languages, we'll try like to make it the more. Yeah, absolutely. Worldwide. I mean, that'd be fantastic. It's French, Spanish and English. Yeah. Right, he's playing music, you know, playing piano and stuff. <laughs> yeah. ah, you're going to get swamped. I won't even bring up about the women, but that's another story. <laughs> Are, you married? I don't know. Are you married or single? The, the women? Oh, not, not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, all right, that's cool. So, uh, um, so it's all coming together, and you've got your eye. Your eye. Why a Swan Fifty One? Where does that come from? Have you got your eye on one now, or you you just like the layout of the boat, or what? Uh, well, I, uh, I've always wanted to, uh, to sail on the Swan because of the, uh, the, the, the reason they were built, which is sailing yeah. far and fast and being comfortable on, uh, on water and because I really like their lines and the 51, because I think it was the, uh, the good, uh, balance between not being too big because uh, of also because of the uh, financial aspect, 
but not yeah. being too small so we can bring people on board like before and after the race so people can uh well can live as uh how would i say it can live the ocean the ocean globe race experience on the boat yeah. what did the ocean globe race yeah 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 okay yep no that's cool um yeah aida our uh, events and um uh, a special supporter and uh, a part of the team, part of the AGR team, is very excited that you're speaking French. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because uh, there will be, we've already got quite a few French entries in the race and uh, we know it's going to be right there. So uh, I think you're going to be in demand with a three way uh, a translation on everything that's happening. So that'll be <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay, so where do you see your biggest challenge at the moment? Forgetting. Okay, knock out the finances. Okay, we know that's going to be a challenge and sponsors yeah. and so on. Um, but moving forward to the, you know, what's your biggest challenge you see it, you know, for, the, for getting into the uh, into the event? The biggest challenge to getting into the event is, uh, well, in my perspective, would be, uh, if we forget about the financials and the boat, would be to make, uh, well, really to, to be able to share what we want to share uh, through the preparation of the race and through the race, because yeah, uh, yeah it's it's a one lifetime experience. Well, it, it's it's probably going to be my one lifetime experience uh, if I don't do it again. Uh, yeah. But so all the feelings that I have and that I am living, I want to share them with with the people. And yeah. to make them realize that, well, if you have a goal, if you have a dream, uh, it's not going to be easy, but, well, let's at least try it. Yeah, yeah. You're doing a pretty good job at the moment because you're generating quite some interesting uh, promos and, uh, you know, your social media following must be growing already. Mm -hmm. So so that's kind of cool. Um, okay, going on from there, I've got some... Um, I'm going to get to know you a bit at the moment because I'm going to ask you some silly questions, okay? And uh, then we'll do some word associations. So I want you to pick a number between 1 to 10. 8. 8. So, okay, what's the most dangerous thing you've ever done? The most dangerous thing I've ever done? Uh, that's a hard one. Uh, <laughs> that's... Uh, mm, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I would say not that easy, has it? <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's easy. not easy. Uh, the most dangerous. Um, Hang on, I'll drop this in. You got a picture? What's going on there? Were you getting washed over the <laughs> side or something? Well, that's that. That wasn't. Well, it was more than dangerous. It was like uh, intense. So yeah. because we were in a race, we were on uh, Saint Bart. Uh, uh, the Le Voile de Saint Bart last year on a Volvo 60, and I was in uh, in four deck, and I had to uh, change the sheet because we had to change the sails and everything, and so I ended up in that uh, position where I was. Like, <laughs> I'm glad, to see you got your glad to see you got your wet weather gear on, but anyway, that's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good enough answer. Pick a number between ten and twenty. Uh, Twelve. 12 okay to date what is the best thing you've ever done the best thing i've ever done until today i would say the best thing i've ever done until today is it, it might be silly the, the the answer might be silly but just to be happy with yeah. myself and and to bring i think i yeah to be happy with myself and with the people i surrounding me Okay. So I think that's the best thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 20 to 30. Uh, 20 to 30. 23. 23. What's your nickname and why? You know, what's, oh. what do people call you and why? Yeah. So because of my name, because they have called me, like, many ways, I have a lot of nicknames. Does anyone else call you Alex? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alex, uh, Marcel. Uh, I feel I, I had a lot of nicknames. But the uh, the well the one I usually use is Axai, and 
Why? It's because like maybe 15 years ago, I went to a, a walk away Thai restaurant and they asked me what was my name. And I was like, Axel. And they said, sorry, I was Axel. Sorry, Axel. Oh, okay. And they gave me the, the, uh, the, the, the box with the food inside and it was written Axai. So A-X-A-Y. <laughs> I was like, okay. Whoa. <laughs> that's good enough. <clears throat> All right, so with 30 to 40. Uh, 34. 34. Do you believe in karma? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do believe too. in karma. I yeah, do believe yeah. that if you do good things, well, at least if you try to do good things, uh, good things will happen to you back. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Do. Okay, 40 to 47. Uh, 46. Are you a leader or a follower? Um, I would say I'm a follower, but every, every time I've been a follower, I ended up being kind of a leader in that group. So yeah. I would say that at first I'm the follower and then little by little things come up and I'm uh, the leader. Okay, so uh, you're planning to be you're planning to be the skipper in the boat? Oh the yeah, race? yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, you're a, you're a, you're a leader then. All right, now this is going to be an obscure question. You pick a letter between A and N. Uh, L. L. If you <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you ate yourself, would you become twice as big or completely disappear? I would think twice as big because i wouldn't like to disappear and <laughs> so people wouldn't see me i want people to <laughs> to know that i'm here so i think <laughs> okay. it would be all right that's cool all right now i'm going <laughs> to drop some single words at you and you need to yeah. just tell me the first thing that comes in your head when i okay. when i bring it home okay yeah. uh, money money uh challenge sponsors uh Interested. Overboard. Ooh, a uh, problem. Mother. Uh, love. Winner. Uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, good. Imp imp impossible. Uh, never. Fear. Uh, to be um, controlled. Uh, adventure. Uh, passion. Holidays. Good. They're great. Books. Uh, a lot. Sp uh, uh, fish. Uh, ocean. Okay. Family. Uh, love again. The best thing. <laughs> okay. That's cool. All right. So um, kind of interesting stuff there. So at that, we push it through the time. So I'm going to bring – I've got uh, uh, Glenn here from – uh, from Scotland when I find him if he's still here here he is uh, I'm gonna bring up Glenn in two one zero g'day Glenn how are you hey Don I'm good how you doing I'm not bad I'm not bad you know Axel on the side there we had a chat before he came up so yeah, what did you, you think of, what did you think of his answers about if he ate himself if you <laughs> if you uh, ate yourself Glenn uh, would you uh, completely disappear or be half as big or whatever? <laughs> no, I'd be twice as big, Don, because I'd have to clone myself first. <laughs> ah, right, okay. That's a typical Scottish answer. Now, we've got a bit of a heritage thing going here because I'm a McIntyre, you know, <laughs> from yep. Larbert or somewhere. Um, so um, just a brief overview. You're our sole Scottish entry. Just give us a quick uh, a quick once over because we're going to do the big number on you in about one month, I think it is. Uh, so okay. this is just an intro, but but just give me a, a, a brief on uh, why you know what and why and what you're using and stuff like that. Yeah, so our, uh, basically we're planning to take <clears throat> the first ever commercially available yacht that uh, non-professional crew could sail around the world on, um, and we're planning to take her around the world again. She did four circumnavigations starting 1996, um, every two years um, with uh, Clipper. And we're planning to take around the world again, this time going back in time, doing it uh, retro, and also doing it via the three three capes. 
So she'll be the first and probably only clipper yacht that will also sail around the entire Southern Ocean as well. Yeah, fantastic. And they're really nice boats. We were chatting before. I nearly, I nearly tried to buy one once. And uh, <laughs> I, I really like them. They're, they're a real workhorse and solid as a rock and just a nice balance, you know, true, real true ocean boats, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think you can have a lot of fun. So you're a Scottish entry and you've got yeah. an interesting connection there with community and so on as well. Do you want to just explain that briefly? Yeah, absolutely. So the, 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 the principle behind the boat is that she's open to all. So uh, although she's fully commercial and operates uh, a, a, a pay-as-you-go sailing season throughout the year, we do reserve a, a number of weeks each year so that we can um, take generally youth and charity groups out um, and they'll come out at cost on the basis that we reinvest the profits that we make for the benefit of the community and for the benefit of the boat as opposed to putting them into um, shareholders' pockets and things like that. So it's quite unique in that respect, but works yeah. very well because we get lots of people exposed to what is often a life-changing experience that might not um, get it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so when I look at the two campaigns, I look at what you're doing, Axel, and then I look at what you're doing, Glenn. There's, there's still a, both of them have got feedback back into the loop of humanity and, uh, you know, adventure and and growing characters and the environment and so on. They're, they're a bit similar. But at the end of the day, uh, well, you're sort of both racing, but you're in different classes because, Alex, uh, Axel, <laughs> you will be in the adventure <laughs> class, adventure class from uh, 47 feet through to 55 feet. And, Glenn, you'll be in the um, in the flyer class as one of the sail training sort of boats there. So that's kind of cool. Um and uh, completely different, but you're still racing together because there's still line on us open, you know. Um, so, so how do you think you're going to perform, uh, Glenn? What do you think you're, uh, you know, like where do you slide? I always say there's three groups in this sort of a race. There's those that are going in it and want to finish. They're going around for the adventure. Then there's those that want to do that, but do the best performance they can. And then there's those that are out for a win. Um, where do you slot yourself, Glenn? Well, I think every sailor has to, to say that they're out for the win. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah. But, I mean, we, we, we've had a, uh, with Taiping, we've had a very good record of, of races that we've entered, especially offshore. Um, now, some might argue we've had favourable conditions, um, et cetera, et cetera. But the boat loves the ocean. She loves getting yeah. her tail stretched out on the ocean. She, she, yeah. she manages very well in a, in a big breeze. Um, and we've we've had great success, even in, in light winds uh, against bigger boats. Um, yeah. And we've not had to push her too hard uh, as well. So she's a, a comfortable racer and designed very, very well. And more information next month about some of the, the, the design tweaks and stuff like that and the history of the boat's <laughs> origins. So have, you, have you actually had any ratings, like a handicap rating on I, you know, IMS or, or whatever? Yeah, we've, we've got we've got IRC. I couldn't tell you what it is, and we've got a local one for up here in Scotland, um, yeah. so we can participate in in, in local events. Yeah. Um, okay. But no, I mean the the, the line honours is 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 what we normally see ourselves attempting to attain on yeah, the basis cool. that we're normally racing with smaller boats that on yeah. under handicap will will always beat us. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, all right, well that that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so um, Axel. Uh, you, what, what's the uh, most exciting thing that you're looking forward to in the race? You've made it to the start line. You're now sailing around the world. What is it in your vision now that you see as being the best part about doing the Ocean Globe? The best part would be to uh, to see how the the, the, the group works together, uh, goes through the challenges together, and manages manages to bring the boat as fast as possible to the next uh, point. And so that just that would be uh, awesome. And if like like the well, for sure, for for sure, our objective is to be uh, competitive and to be first. But yeah. even if we don't, we really want to be able to look back at those times we we're on the water and uh, maybe have a tear because it was so unique and so special and so beautiful that. So that's what I. Yeah, who's going to be the navigator? You're going to be listed as skipper. But have yeah. you done anything about celestial yet? Celestial navigation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we have a navigator, which is uh, actually a cartographer, and uh, did that uh, because of uh, his project. So, okay. 
So what's the what's the average age of your group of six at the moment? You think something you know, like you, you you know, you're all about the same age, or does it go all over the place? And are you all the same gender at the moment? Uh, no, we are a mixed mixed crew, and we have from twenty uh, well for now twenty uh, four. I think the youngest one is two fifty one. Okay, yeah, and yeah. all guys, or you got a girl in there as well, or? So uh, for now we have uh, two girls and the rest are guys. Oh, fantastic! That's cool. Yeah. So where do you where do you see that crew combination, Glenn? For you, like uh, I suppose you'll have the o way oversubscribed, and, and you can take your pick a little bit. And you and are you tra and Glenn, are you tra obviously planning to change crew during the race? Um, well, what what we really want, Don, is this is about a circumnavigation, um, and <clears throat> that's that's where the focus and priority priority is going to be um, and, and it'll be a crew that will build up um, over the, the the years proceeding so we plan to launch um, in October <clears throat> which will bring in the recruitment aspect and then everybody who applies will get a chance to come on a trip on the ocean see what they think see how they like it will then there'll be some folk that maybe decide it's not for them other folk will be, be bitten by that passion of, of watching stars slide by in the middle of the night as you, you, you gracefully slide through the ocean quietly. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll basically see where we go. Um, we know there'll likely be a wait list. We know there'll likely be people who'll be disappointed. Um, but for us with Taiping, this is a, a, an opportunity that just couldn't be missed uh, to go back yeah. to this traditional Absolutely. way of doing it. So it all starts next month. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, yours is. I mean, I mean, I look at, look at all our entries. There's there's so many amazing stories there. But uh, certainly the Scottish are going to be well represented. Yours, yours are good one, Um And so Axel, you're going to um, you've got like these six people now involved with the team. Are they going to go all the way around, or you're going to have a rotating crew, or how how are you going to manage that side of it? The plan is to be uh, the same that we start and we finish. So all yeah. we all do the the whole race. That's the plan. Uh, now, for sure, we will have some backup if anything goes wrong, and we need. Yes, yeah, someone, to... someone might not like your music. You know, they they can't oh, yeah. up with music for seven months if they don't like it. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to write a special. I'm going to write a special notice of race for your boat. You have to take a piano. You have to take an electric piano. You know, <laughs> that'll be kind of cool. Yeah. All right. So, um, so that's all good. Um, Glenn, okay, I'm going to. Um, just uh, park you on the side now, Glenn, because we're going to have a big chat. I don't want to talk about too much, but um, we'll be uh, September, October. We will have chatted just before you launch, right? In about a month, you're going to yep. launch. Uh, yeah, that's right. So that'll I look forward to that. That'll be quite fun, and we can go go for it in depth because I think you're doing some uh, some pretty cool programs. I mean, it was interesting just before we came on live, we chatted about the pandemic. And you were saying you opened up next season and you got swamped within 12 hours or something, filled the boat up. What, what happened there? Yeah, basically the first the first um, trip that we announced, and it was announced to our closed group of subscribers, not to the public. It still hasn't actually gone out to public. Um, and the first trip that we put on, we basically sold out within 12 hours. It was put on about 8 p.m. on a Sunday night. Um, and we sold out um, within 12 hours of that Sunday night. So sold out yeah. overnight, basically, which yeah. was was amazingly fantastic. And we've now got enough people on the wait list for that particular trip to to, to do a second boat if we had one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the rest the rest of our twenty one schedule goes out later this month. And um, I think people know now that they, they've had to sit at home. They've had to be isolated. People have people's adventure spirit has been reawakened in a lot of them. Um, you yeah. know, and, and and let's go out and get this done. You know. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting point, eh? You get to reflect a lot. I mean, Jane and I have been pretty interested. We've chopped around. We've gone through three quarantines so far, and it's still ongoing. You know, Australia, you can't get out, but I can because because uh, I'm hardly ever in Australia. But but yeah, people reflect on their life. You know, this is this is uh, it's going to be a bold new world out there. And I think I'm hearing all sorts of funny stories. One of them is that small to medium sized yachts are selling like crazy at the moment because people yeah. are deciding they need to get a yacht to go. Which is really amazing, and so yeah, lifestyle and uh, the meaning of life is is maybe far more important than it used to be. Just just uh, you know six seven months ago. So uh, mm -hmm. and, and another interesting point, we got so many people on the uh, Ocean Globe Base uh, interested entrance page, you know, or crew wanting to get on. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any shortage of people that want to uh, jump on a boat to do this event. So 
Anyway, we'll talk more about that uh, in about a month, Glenn. So sure. I'm going to kick you sideways. Sorry. October 7th. Okay. Yep. So anyway, anyway okay. we've got, I think we've got two people watching this live, so it's okay. <laughs> but they'll all watch it later. So those two that are watching, you better get there on, on October the... You've got 23, Don. Give yourself some credit. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's always it's always fun to be there after, so, you know, to watch what happens. And uh, uh, people can comment. We always read the comments. So, uh, okay. So I look forward to that, Glenn. We'll see you then, eh? See you later. Any thought, before I get rid of you, anything you want to say now before you go? I'll just, just say good, good luck to Axel. Thank right. you. Um, I'm, I'm the team. I'm the campaign, and uh, I look look forward to catching up with you in the pontoons, if not before. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. Okay, thanks, Glenn. See you later. See ya. Yeah, bye bye. Okay, so that's cool. So, um, so okay, so you're gonna have one crew basically going all the way around. That's gonna be fun. And I know there's that's there's a real uh, there's a real drive for that. There's gonna be quite a lot of crew changes, but I can totally understand. Uh, the whole concept and the dream of doing the whole event that that's really a big thing um so yeah i know where you're coming from there um all right so so uh we'll probably do this again in about a year's time yeah. <laughs> awesome. and that'll be interesting to look back and see what's happened where do you think you'll be in a, in one year's time in one year's time i hope to be on the boat I'm yeah starting to uh to 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 sail into uh and to get ready with the crew to uh, the ocean libraries yeah, That's have you point. seen it? Have you, have you seen a few Swan Fifty Ones? What sort of budget are they? Are you looking at to buy the base? You know, to get into the, you know, get a boat. Uh, yeah, I've seen uh, some of them. I visited uh, also uh, some of them, and they're all about around two hundred thousand euros, uh, which yeah. I don't know how many, how much it is in uh, Australian uh, dollar, but it's kind of two uh, three hundred and fifty or something. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of a budget, and uh, have, you, well. have you seen that there's one particular layout for the 51? There's not many of them, but there's one that has the extra cabin on the port side, which is a double cabin, two yeah. bucks across the, under the cockpit. That yeah. one's a glamour uh, oh. because one of the 51s that's already entered has that layout, but none of the others have. It's a really <laughs> cool layout, you know. You, uh, it's one of the best. Oh, <laughs> but you know the one I mean. Yeah. You know the one I mean. Yeah, yeah that, that's that. If I had a fifty-one, that'd be the one to go for. But anyway, oh, yeah, okay. Good. So you're going to be in the boat and uh, and training. So that'll be cool. Um, all right. So good luck with all that. Anything that you want to say? Finally, uh, one thing that's always of interest. If you could change anything in the rules of the Ocean Globe race, what would it be? One thing. Uh, what I would change uh, in the rules. Um, Uh, well, that's a good question. But... <laughs> this is like the cooking show, you know, when you drum oh, roll. Yeah, no. What are you going to change, you know? <laughs> um, well, that's a good answer for me because it means nothing's really glaring you in the head, so you're pretty yeah. satisfied with everything generally. Yeah. So yeah. in a uh, well, in in a utopic uh, way, maybe. Uh, the fact that there are so few because of the interest, but so few uh, entrants in uh, the adventure class, maybe, because I think yeah. the adventure class is the most uh, accessible class for yeah. uh, well for for people. Yeah. So I think that, but I understand that there's a lot of, of organization, and we and we have to uh, to have a limit, but. Uh, yeah, I think it would be great to have more entries. More yeah, entries. yeah. But we we're actually full. We, we, you probably heard the story, but we had 10, but then we lost two during the pandemic. So we're full at eight, but we okay. ended up with an extra in the, uh, in the, uh, Sayula class, the mm -hmm. 55 to 65 feet. So we've actually got nine there now. And, uh, what will happen is we keep to the class capacities until yeah. two years before the start. We're coming up to three years. So in another year's time, uh, we drop all all limits on all classes and we go out to the situation where we have 34 maximum number of boats and that may allow another opportunity but yeah. 
Yeah, but anyway, we'll, we'll uh, yeah, it'd be good. To, I mean, yeah, there's no question. I mean, the other thing is there's still a lot of people in the world that don't know about the Ocean Globe race. Yeah, and, uh, that's not worrying us at all. We're about, we've been laying low for a while and we're about to restart that. And you'll see more press coming up. And then all of a sudden there'll be a lot more entrants wanting oh, yeah. to join. <laughs> you know, it's going to be quite interesting. So anyway, all right. So good good to chat, Axel. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll obviously do this again in about a year's time. We'll rotate. Oh, yeah. Uh, people through um, and we'll be chatting anyway between now and then yeah. as we do so uh, good to see you okay oh, yeah, you. so thank, thank you so much John, for everything no problem all right stay good there and say good day to your team eh? oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> all righty yep see you later all right yep Take care. okay so uh that's it for this one and there's another one on october the 7th which will be uh, uh glenn once again so we'll see you see you in a month with glenn see you later thanks